Hello, welcome to teach you why. Some of you have DM me on my Instagram asking for help on electromagnetism. And I've also seen a couple of comments on Reddit that electromagnetism is a problem for you guys. Hence, I thought that I'll be posting a very last minute video of me going through some of the electromagnetic questions from the past year prelim papers. I hope you can learn a thing or two from this video before the exam this afternoon. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so um, essentially electromagnetism, the, there's two main things that you need to learn. Uh, I won't go into too much of the details, but essentially what you need to learn is your two hand, two hand rule. And what are the two hand rule? First is your Fleming left hand rule, and next is your right hand grip rule. Okay, so let me just touch a little bit, uh, a few pointers on what Fleming left hand rule does and what right hand rule, uh, right hand grip rule does. Okay, so Fleming left hand rule, how is it used and when do we use it? It is used when, okay, you have a force, uh, no, sorry. When you have a field, when you have a magnetic field, and then it is acting in presence of a current, okay, which will result to a force, okay. So so basically, Fleming Wavell rule, right? Is just its purpose is just to find directions, okay, directions of what you may ask. Okay, directions are either uh, B few. Okay, B few is magnetism. Okay, B few or force or current. Okay, the whole purpose is really just to find the direction. Now, common mistake. What is the common mistake? Okay, common mistake is that you use Fleming left hand rule to explain why there is a force uh, acting on a wire, for example. So common mistake is that student use uh, uh, Fleming left hand rule okay, to explain the force. Okay, so so common mistake, we cannot use Fleming left hand rule to explain why there is a force acting on a wire. Its only purpose, like its name suggests, is a rule. So a rule is just a rule of thumb whereby you find the direction. You can only use it to explain how come the force is into the page, out of the page, etc. Okay, so later on when I go through the questions, right? You will see how some of the questions when I answer, I didn't. I only use Fleming left hand rule to talk about the directions of the force or the current or the B field, but I will never use it as an explanation to reason why a force is being created. Okay, so then the next thing is on right hand grip rule. Now, right hand grip rule, what does it mean? Right hand grip rule just means that okay. If you have a current carrying charge, okay. So for example, I have a wire that is going into the page. By the way, this is this X means going to the page. It creates a a magnetic field this way, okay. That radiates around the field. Okay, so you have uh, so in this case, this will be use your right hand. You point it into the page. Okay. Now, so this is one way to use right hand grip rule. Another way to use right hand grip rule is when I have a solenoid. Okay. So it's gonna work the same way. So for instance, let's say there is a current. Okay, going this way. So you will go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. And then, uh, uh, okay, sorry. 
Okay, so let me repeat myself. Another way, another use of the right hand grip rule, right? Basically, is to use and determine the direction of the solid, of the magnetic field in a solenoid. So let's say I have a current that's moving in this manner. I go down, 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 and then I go down. Okay, so if you were to use your right hand grip rule, you grip kind of like a, you, you imagine you have a rod. Okay, you grip a rod using your right hand and then you look at where the direction is. So in this case, the direction is downwards. So my north is here, my south is here. Okay, uh, again, I will talk about this in all the examples later. Now, this is just, the whole idea here is just to talk about uh, how to use the rules and when to use the rule. So for right hand grip rule, right, most most common, uh, I would say mistake or um, the most common things that students confuse is that how come there is this and there is this. Okay, in short, I mean we don't have much time until the exam, so I just want to give you a quick tip: is that both can be used. Okay, and in this in this example or in this uh walkthrough uh, electromagnetism uh, walkthrough videos right I will be showing you both types of right hand grip rule okay basically they work the same way they function the same way kind of the same way okay so we will see how it goes and uh, and let's let's get started all right so um, so you have this question okay so this question actually the first part is not as not so much on electromagnetism, but it's more of like magnetism. So I just thought that, you know, since someone has asked for help on magnetism and electromagnetism, I just bring in this question. Okay, so for this question, uh, you have a permanent magnet that is attracting the paper clip. Okay, so you have a paper clip is being attracted to here. And, and then after that, you have another case. Case two is where you have a metal plate and then the paper clip doesn't doesn't get attracted. So the first question. So explain why small paper clips is attracted to the magnet as shown. Now they say explain why. So how should you go about answer? I should. I will explain the. I will write down the correct answer and then I will explain what is the wrong answer. So to explain why. Okay. So we say that. We say that the permanent magnet okay this 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 magnet okay induce a opposite pole on the paper clip okay so basically you are trying to say that this magnet induce or makes this small paper clip a, a magnet so that's what it means by induce okay induce means to to cause the small paper clip to become a magnet and then but we need to say why okay as the paper clip clip is made of magnetic material okay so this is only one mark so essentially what i'm trying to say is that the the whole chain of thought is this first we need to say that the magnet this magnet makes this paper clip a magnet okay and and why why and how it can make this a magnet because this is a magnetic material Okay, so this is the chain of thought. That's why you have this part here, right? So this is only one mark because we haven't explained to explain why it gets attracted. We only say that the small paper clip is now a magnet. That's all we are saying right now. It we haven't talked about why it gets attracted. So to to write the attracted part, right? We will say that um, unlike poles a track okay basically i'm trying to say that 
assuming if this is not pole, this is south pole, and this is not pole, right? This 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 paper clip become a magnet, right? Because it induces it to become a magnet, and unlike poles attract. Hence, okay, the paper clip. gets attracted okay so so we have two marks here the black one is the second mark all right so let's move on when the iron plate is placed between the magnet and the small paper clip as shown in figure 8.2 the paper clip falls to the bench explain this observation now what what do we learn okay so this i this man metal plate right this metal plate is actually iron plate and when if you were to recall if you were to recall right iron is what we call a magnetic shielding uh, material now what it does is that let's say this is not pole this is south pole right so it will cause it will direct the magnetism this way okay so we have the magnetism this way Okay, so this is called magnetic shielding. Okay, so because it's iron, it can shield. It shield. You see, by right, by right, the without the metal, without the metal plate, right, the magnetism will come this way, north to, and then it will cause this to be a south pole, and then it gets attracted. Okay, but because of this metal, the magnetic field actually goes sideways. to it sideways okay it gets shielded so you see it doesn't you see look at the direction of the magnetic field it doesn't interact with it doesn't interact with this small paper clip so how do we answer this so to answer this quite simple we say that the metal plate being uh being made of iron okay is able to concentrate the magnetic field from the permanent magnet okay so it concentrate uh, so you see it goes in it concentrate it concentrates okay and so this is so this is my first point and the second point is and this shoes the paper clip from being uh, magnetized oh being magnetized and attracted okay that's why uh, that's the reason so basically what I'm trying to say is that this is a magnetic shielding okay and therefore that the magnetism cannot interact with this small paper clip and because it cannot interact with this small paper clip it be cannot become a magnet and if it cannot become a magnet it cannot be attracted to this okay so that's for magnetism. So the next question, question, uh, next question is on electromagnetism. Okay, so we have uh, a wire band the U shape frame labeled A, B, C, D supported on two knife edges. The knife edges support the wire at P and Q. The section P, B, C, Q of the wire frame is then placed within a coil wire. The top view is as shown. So that means you look on top like this, your eyes. Okay, you imagine it from a bird's eye view, you look you're looking at, at this. Okay, so that's why this this part here. Alright. So 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 this this thing. Alright. Okay, so <clears throat> now how do we answer this? When a current S is switched, is closed. Current flows in the wire frame and a coil of wire 
uh, current from the source flow in the wireframe at P and leave at Q. Okay, so we need to first label the direction of the y uh, of the of the current. So it goes in at P, and then it comes out at Q. Okay, so you can see it goes this way. All right. So, <coughs> uh, so part one: a magnetic field line passes through the center of the coil of wire. Draw and label the direction of this magnetic field on figure 9.2. Okay, so we need to draw here. Now, what is this? So this is the example. This is a coil. What is a coil? Coil is equals to solenoid. Okay, same thing. So basically, it's this thing. Right? So how do... So how from here, how do we determine the direction of the magnetic field? I go back to what we discussed earlier here. So in this case, which one, are, which rule are we gonna use? We are gonna use our right hand grip rule. Now, this is for this case, the solenoid, solenoid case. Okay, this one is for a single wire. Okay, so we are using right hand grip rule. So if you were to use right hand grip rule, you grip. So imagine your fingers. Okay, I try to draw, draw your hand. So if you will grip right, this is your these are your fingers. And then you your thumb will be like this. Okay. So this is your right hand. Alright, so this is your fingernail. Lah, okay. So your fingernail basically pointing arrow downwards. And then your thumb is pointing this way. And therefore we know that using right hand grip rule, okay, if we were to place place your hand on on this diagram, right? The, magnetic field will be in this direction okay that's all right uh, oh label the direction of this magnetic field lines on 9.2 okay so we need to draw nicely the magnetic field lines so let me remove, remove everything okay so the magnetic field lines will be like this, uh, like this. Okay, so how, so this means what? This is north and here is south. So here, this part here are right in red. This is north, this is south. So magnetic field always goes from north to south. So then again, okay. Okay, so it's going from north Okay, from north all the way to south. And then we can draw something like this, something like this. Okay, and then draw something like this, something like this. Alright, quite messy, but I hope you guys know what to do. Most important thing is that I'm teaching how to use right hand grip rule. So look at this, like, this, this sketch here. This is your hand, okay? This is your fingers, your arrow. And yeah, so your thumb is pointing this way. Therefore, your north, your thumb is pointing north. All right. Uh, when the current flows in the frame, the frame rotates about the knife edges. Draw an arrow on 9.1 to indicate the direction of the force on BC. Okay, so first thing first, we need to know where the current is moving. So the current is moving in from Q this way and this way. Okay. It's entering from Q, right? It's coming in from Q and then going out at, at eh, sorry, entering at P and going out at Q. All right. And then what do we have? We have a magnetic field that is acting in this manner. Okay. We have a magnetic field that is acting in this in this manner. So they want to know what? Draw an arrow on 9.1 to indicate the force. You see? So an arrow means I want to know the force. So I will draw the force in green. So the force, if I were to use my so in this case, which which rule should we use? We should use Fleming left hand rule. Okay, so let me bring this down to remind us. Okay, Fleming left hand rule. So my 
oh just nice we can use this okay so you see if I were to superimpose okay so my current is my current is moving here and then my force is upwards and then my field is this way okay therefore we know that the force is upwards so this is how you use Fleming left hand rule okay all right so uh, and explain your answer okay so so this is where most students get it wrong okay and watch how I answer this uh, yeah so watch how I answer this um, we will say that the magnetic field generated by the wire BC okay creates a magnetic field which interacts with the magnetic field of the solenoid okay creating a force upwards okay based on Fleming's left hand rule okay so what is important is that what I'm trying to say is this okay what I'm trying to say is that you see whenever there is a current that is passing through a wire so BC is a wire so you, it, it creates like a magnetic field here okay so it's very confusing so uh, there is a current here so BC there is a magnetic field this way okay so and then at the same time you also have a magnetic field due to this solenoid here okay this solenoid here is in this in this direction as shown in the green okay so this two magnetic field the red magnetic field okay the red magnetic field and then the green magnetic field they both interact with each other to create this force f all right so that's what and that's how i answer you don't say that based on fleming left hand rule there is a force okay fleming left hand rule only tells you what is the direction it doesn't explain why there is a force so in order for you to explain why there is a force you need to explain in this manner okay so please take note common mistake is i repeat common mistake i always see student writing Fleming left hand based on Fleming left hand rule there is a force no Fleming left hand rule doesn't shows you the force it only tells you that there is a they only tell you the direction of the force that's it okay describe the effect on the rotation of the coil if terminals of the battery are reversed so if it's reversed very simple so that means if I reverse the terminals the the direction is reversed okay and if the direction is reversed uh, likewise the magnetic field will be reversed and if the magnetic field is reversed then the force will be reversed okay so uh, the rotation will be about uh, will be clockwise about point Q okay basically what I'm trying to say is that imagine this is my pivot right now because there's a force downward there's a moment arm here okay there's a force downwards 
and then you have this wire that forms a moment arm it creates a clockwise moment okay before that before that it was creating a anti-clockwise okay that is before this is after okay after all right okay part c the coil or wire of length l is now connected to a battery as shown is in figure 9.3 indicate on 9.3 the direction of the current in the coil when the switch is closed so uh quite easy you just need to follow positive negative current conventional current flows from positive to negative okay so you go here here and here and then it goes here okay then it forms a loop like this all right so that's how we get a one mark uh it is observed that turns in the coin move closer when current is flowing through explain why this occurs aha uh -huh. so now again we need to talk about this so so why why do they move closer together right so perhaps you may even learn this current okay can you see that this these two wires are okay these two wires all right the outside one okay the outside ones the i will highlight the inside ones this is the inside ones okay the outside ones uh, let me change color so red 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 and then behind is blue 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 okay so if you were to look at them on the outside right so i have like a coil okay i have coil i have another coil just imagine it this way okay so now can you see that the outside which is the red okay the red wires they have current that is flowing through in the same direction okay maybe you may not know this or maybe you have memorized this i'm not too sure okay but essentially what happens is that current that is moving in uh when you have two wires and then you have current that is moving in the same direction in these two wires right they create a force attracting each other okay so um so how how do we explain this now i can um so if we were to look at it from a bird's eye view okay so imagine you put your eye here what happens is that okay this is my wire the current is coming out of the page all right so as usual if you were to use your right hand grip rule okay so watch what happens uh. um, so if you were to use your right hand grip rule okay it will form this coil, this wire here, okay, let's call it wire one, will form a magnetic field as shown in the red arrow, okay. And then this wire two, okay, this one, will form a magnetic field like this, uh, same thing. Okay, so I want you guys to pay attention here. What happens here? What happens here is that wire 1 and wire 2 magnetic field cancel out. Cancel here. So what happens when it cancels here? So you see, uh, when it cancels, right? Basically, oh, um, let me change the eraser. Okay, so when it cancels, right? There is no more magnetic field here at the center and instead right the magnetic field looks like this uh, okay so what happens is that over here you have more magnetic field okay you have more magnetic field lines 
and then it pushes in, it pushes in. That's why they attract one another. Okay, so how we I, I spend some time to explain this so that you will know how to explain this in, in the exam. So how how will I explain this? I will say that um wires with same uh sorry, let me let me rephrase this. Two wires, okay, uh, parallel, two or I should put bad English, uh, it should be two parallel wires with the same direction of current flowing through will be attracted okay why is that so okay we only say that why because we only say one point and why so we need to say one more thing because both wires creates magnetic field that interacts with each other magnetic field causes uh, a force on both wires to be attracted okay basically i'm trying to explain that you see uh if you have watched right this magnetic field and this magnetic field they cancel out here it cancel out no more okay but the existing those at the outside still exist therefore it create there are more magnetic field outside than inside it creates this force pushing the two wires in okay so that's how we answer this kind of question okay next next question um let me see what else okay so next question uh not quite a magnetic question first calculate the amount of current in the solenoid so we have um we have what information you have 4.5 we have 0 0.3 ohm therefore you the entire current goes through here therefore if i were kept if I were to draw a simple diagram, right? You have a variable resistor, you have a resistor. This is a resistor by a by a solenoid. Okay, this is your uh, variable. And then this is 4.5, this is 0 0.3, this is 12 volts. So how do you find the current? So the current will be equals to PD over R, okay? So PD over the total resistance. So PD is 12 divided by uh, 4.5 plus 0 0.3 equals to 12 divided by 4.8, you get 2.5 ampere, okay? This is just, this question is just on, uh, on your circuits, right? Okay, moving on. The current in the solenoid magnetize the soft iron core. Explain two changes that can made to increase the strength of the magnetic field. Now, this should be quite simple. So, uh, explain two change. So one change is to one change to this. Uh, okay, one change to this is uh, reduce. Reduce the um resistance on the variable resistor okay hence 
this increase the current flowing through the solenoid and increase magnetism too bad this is only one mark right after writing so long <laughs> because they want you to explain so you need to see the chain reaction so you need to say that re r drop therefore results to i to increase and when i increase b few increase okay so this is my schematic of how i am trying to explain in terms of words so the next thing i'm gonna say is uh the next point i'm gonna say is increase number of coil around the cork okay so this is your second mark so the first mark very very long the second mark very very short all right quite straightforward part c determine the polarity at point x and y of the soft iron core okay as usual as usual okay so so you see whenever you have a solenoid and you need to determine the direction of the um, of of the magnetism which rule do you use we will still use okay right hand grip rule but first before we start with right hand grip rule we draw the direction of the uh, of the uh, of the in the coil okay yeah all right so so if based on this right right hand grip rule so you imagine you grip this using your right hand okay so the only way for you to grip it is like this so uh, I'll draw the ugly hand again so you 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 can only grip it this way okay two three four and your thumb so your thumb your thumb here you see you grip it this way all right therefore when your thumb is down, this is your north pole, this is your south pole. Now, then some of you may, may be thinking, huh, but this is north pole and south pole, then how about this? Okay, so now the thing about soft iron core is this, it can divert away the magnetic field. Okay, therefore, you see, so it follows the arrow, right? So this is north, this is south. All right, so I repeat. Because it is an iron, it is a magnetic material, it can kind of redirect the direction of the uh, magnetic, magnetic, magnetic field, okay, within the core. Hence, X is south, Y is north, all right? Okay, a current is made to flow through PQ from left to right. Describe and explain what happens to PQ. So left to right is left to right this way okay so describe what happened so um again what do we have you see you have a b field that is going from north to south so it's going this way upwards and then you have current okay current going in so once you have current and you so when you have current and then you have your b field or magnetic field okay perpendicular to each other right okay uh keyword is the current and the b field has to be perpendicular to each other so you see my current is horizontal my b field is upwards can you see it forms a right angle okay so it is perpendicular right therefore what forms you create a force and how do we find the how do you find the force direction? Okay, use uh, Fleming left hand group. Okay, so what we will say is X, a current is made to flow through PQ from left to right. Describe and explain what happens to PQ. Okay, so let's see what happens. Um, 
the wire will be pushed. Okay, wait, I haven't decide. I haven't discussed which direction. So using your Fleming left hand rule, ah, uh, Fleming left hand rule. Uh, okay, let's bring down this. Okay, so using Fleming left hand rule, uh, the B field is upwards. So you need to kind of like tilt your hand this way and then your current is pointing to the left. Therefore, there will be a force, right? Okay, there will be a force that is out of the pitch. Okay, it will be pushed out of the pitch. Okay, you will see that this this motion arrow right is pointing towards you okay pointing towards your fix that's why it's pointing out of the page okay so it will be pushed out of the page uh, and explain so why is that so uh, describe and explain what happens so again we need we will need to talk about the magnetic field uh, created by the current okay I should I will I will re I will rewrite this whole thing I think there's a better way to write so we will say that base on Fleming left hand rule the there will be a force which will push the wire out of the pitch. Okay, so this is only one mark. So the Fleming left hand rule decides on the direction, okay, which is out of the pitch. And then why? Why is that so? Is because again, we'll write the same old boring question answers is that the magnetic field created by the current carrying wire interacts with the magnetic field of the solenoid okay same thing what i'm trying to say is that the wire will interact with the b field due to the core all right that's all state and explain the effect of pq if 12 volts battery is replaced with the 12 volt ac supply now what is ac supply or alternating supply alternating means it will go left and right so by right by right you see if you if you change this to an ac right that this thing doesn't exist that we wouldn't have a fixed direction so what we will see is that it will go left and right okay the direction will change left and right left right left right left right all right so what we will see is what we will see is that we will see that this wire right will be pushed in out in out okay because the direction of the force keep changing due to the changing b field and hence we will say that the wire will be oscillating okay in and out of the pitch okay oscillating means go in and out like that in or in out oscillating all right then uh this is because the ac current ac source will have constant 
change in current direction and change in direction of the magnetic field okay which constantly change the force acting on the wire okay so what am i trying to say here i'm trying to say that ac okay creates a changing current and then the changing current results to a changing b view and the changing b view results to a changing force therefore going uh, in and out of pitch okay so this is my chain this is my sequence of explanation why all right all right next one explain why the core electromagnetic um electromagnetic should not be made of steel okay this is, this is simple uh steel is a hard magnetic material which does not loses magnetism easily okay so the idea of electromagnet is to be able to on and off the magnetism easily okay that's all all right last yeah last example okay last example for the day i don't think you guys have much time also to to watch this video fully uh so last example a student has made a battery tester shown in figure 9.1 it uses a magnet wires that is flexible and springy and a pointer with it she can check whether a battery is live or dead when she connects a battery to a tester and the pointer points to the right explain by drawing the magnetic field around the wires in the diagram below to show why the pointer deflects okay the circle shows the cross-sectional area a cross-section of the wire a b so my eyes we are looking so why we are trying to we are looking here so okay so this is going into the page this is it goes here and then it comes out of the page so a b this is a b so a b and then c d okay so uh, a b what does it have it has a current going into the page and then c d it has current that is coming out of the page all right so as usual okay as usual uh in this case right they want us to draw magnetic field around the wire so what are we going to use this is again your right hand grip rule now this right hand grip rule is to use for a single wire it's not your solenoid already so like i said right hand grip rule there's two kind one is to use for a single wire one is to use for a um is to use for a what do you call uh is to use for a solenoid okay so you have a wire so in this case we are doing a wire so 
using right hand grip rule, you point it inwards. So your 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 finger, your thumb is pointing inwards. Your finger will wrap around like this. Okay, like 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 if you see how your hand grip right, you will grip like like this. Okay, this is your finger. Okay, so this is the arrow. So in this case, uh, the right hand grip rule, based on right hand grip rule, you will be this way. And then in this case, the green ones pointing upwards will be uh, this way. Okay. And then here, and then here. Okay. Uh, and there's another third magnetic field, north to south. North, north. Uh, Okay, so um, what can we say? Hmm. Okay, first of all, let's see how it interacts with each other. So we have all the magnetic field and uh, what diagram in? Okay, so let's focus here. Okay, it's a bit hard for me to describe, but let's focus here. Alright, so here, what you will observe is, what you observe is that the magnetic field cancel out one each other. So here you have, if you see here, right, this part, the magnetic field is up, and then the blue one is going down. Okay, so therefore, over here, we have a cancel out magnetic field, maybe uh, like this. Okay, something like this. Uh, all right, and what do you observe? You observe that, okay, there is a force this way. Why? Because there are stronger magnetic field. If you were to cut this into half, can you see that there are, there's no magnetic field here. Okay, there's no magnetic field here. So you have more magnetic field here than here. Therefore, it creates a force in this direction. And hence, uh, it results, it pushes, it pushes the wire AB to the right. Okay, to the right. And then likewise, if you were to observe this wire CD, CD also the same but it's the reverse. Okay, so again, this part here, there's no magnetic, there's no magnetic field. It has been cancelled out. If you take note here, okay, you have up, and then you have your down magnetic field. So this part here, cancel out one another. And therefore, the net effect is that you have a force in this manner. All right. And then, therefore, what happens is that it creates a moment. Okay. Can you see this one creates a, uh, it creates a clockwise moment. This one also creates a clockwise moment. All right. So how are we going to explain this? So we, we have basically only two marks here. So how I'm going to explain is that uh, the force acting uh, the interactions 
between the magnetic field creates a right a force due right on AB and a force due left on CD okay now it's not done yet having a force is not good enough this creates a clockwise moment which points the pointer to the right okay so can you see uh, if you have a force here and then you have a force here you create a clockwise moment okay and therefore the the thing will tilt here lah. okay you imagine a pointer will will tilt here and then kind of like point this way all right part b state what would be observed on a pointer if the battery she connect is delivering less current so less current so this is quite straightforward uh, less current means uh, weaker weaker force and hence will deflect less okay so less car less current weaker force and hence deflect less okay the students wants to make the tester more sensitive so that the pointer can move through a greater distance when the battery is connected states two ways that she needs to change the design to make this happen now in this case you cannot say use a stronger battery because you this setup is the whole purpose is to test for battery so what we can do is um well uh what we can do is that we can okay we can increase the length of the pointer now why increase the length of the pointer will help because right if i have a longer arm right okay you can have greater uh, moment arm okay right that's one way another way is another way is increase the distance between line uh, wire AB and CD now same effect if I were to increase the, the distance can you see my pivot is here if now it's here and then now it's here the moment arm increases okay so it, this is this is how we can make it more sensitive and then like it's it allows it to swing faster okay so that's all for this uh, quick one through on electromagnetism and how to answer some of these more typical question. I hope this kind of question may come out later for the exam. And uh, in any way, all the best to you guys. Uh, I will, I will, I will upload. I think another three papers but that papers will be on paper one both on chemistry and physics okay so please please stay tuned and subscribe to this channel because paper one solutions will be coming up next and uh, that will that can make or break whether you can get your a or not all right so all the best to your exams and uh, 